It's a Monday evening in Minneapolis. Police respond to a call about a man who allegedly used a counterfeit $20 bill to buy cigarettes. 17 minutes later, the man they are there to investigate lies motionless on the ground and is pronounced dead shortly after. The man was 46-year-old George Floyd, a bouncer originally from Houston who'd lost his job at a restaurant when the coronavirus pandemic hit. Floyd's death triggered major protests in Minneapolis and sparked rage across the country. One of the officers involved, Derek Chauvin, has been arrested and charged with second-degree murder. The other three officers have been charged with aiding and abetting murder. The Times analyzed bystander videos, security camera footage, and police scanner audio, spoke to witnesses and experts, and reviewed documents released by the authorities to build as comprehensive a picture as possible and better understand how George Floyd died in police custody. The events of May 25th begin here. Floyd is sitting in the driver's seat of this blue SUV. Across the street is a convenience store called Cup Foods. Footage from this restaurant's security camera helps us understand what happens next. Note that the timestamp on the camera is 24 minutes fast. At 7.57 p.m., two employees from Cup Foods confront Floyd and his companions about an alleged counterfeit bill he just used in their store to buy cigarettes. They demand the cigarettes back, but walk away empty-handed. Four minutes later, they call the police. According to the 911 transcript, an employee says that Floyd used fake bills to buy cigarettes and that he is awfully drunk and not in control of himself. Soon, the first police vehicle arrives on the scene. Officers Thomas Lane and J. Alexander Koenig step out of the car and approach the blue SUV. Seconds later, Lane pulls his gun, we don't know exactly why, and orders Floyd to put his hands on the wheel. Lane reholsters the gun, and after about 90 seconds of back and forth, yanks Floyd out of the SUV. A man is filming the confrontation from a car parked behind them. The officers cuff Floyd's hands behind his back, and Koenig walks him to the restaurant wall. All right, what's your name? From the 911 transcript and the footage, we now know three important facts. First, that the police believed they were responding to a man who was drunk and out of control. But second, even though the police were expecting this situation, we can see that Floyd has not acted violently. And third, that he seems to already be in distress. Six minutes into the arrest, the two officers move Floyd back to their vehicle. As the officers approach their car, we can see Floyd fall to the ground. According to the criminal complaints filed against the officers, Floyd says he is claustrophobic and refuses to enter the police car. During the struggle, Floyd appears to turn his head to address the officers multiple times. According to the complaints, he tells them he can't breathe. Nine minutes into the arrest, the third and final police car arrives on the scene. It's carrying officers Tu Tao and Derek Chauvin. Both have previous records of complaints brought against them. Tao was once sued for throwing a man to the ground and hitting him. Chauvin has been involved in three police shootings, one of them fatal. Chauvin becomes involved in the struggle to get Floyd into the car. Security camera footage from Cup Foods shows Koenig struggling with Floyd in the back seat while Tao watches. Chauvin pulls him through the back seat and onto the street. We don't know why. Floyd is now lying on the pavement, face down. That's when two witnesses begin filming, almost simultaneously. The footage from the first witness shows us that all four officers are now gathered around Floyd. It's the first moment when we can clearly see that Floyd is face down on the ground, with three officers applying pressure to his neck, torso, and legs. At 8.20 p.m., we hear Floyd's voice for the first time. The video stops when Lane appears to tell the person filming to walk away. The officers radio a code too, a call for non-emergency medical assistance, reporting an injury to Floyd's mouth. In the background, we can hear Floyd struggling. The call is quickly upgraded to a code three, a call for emergency medical assistance. 
By now, another bystander, 17-year-old Darnella Frazier, is filming from a different angle. Her footage shows that despite calls for medical help, Chauvin keeps Floyd pinned down for another seven minutes. We can't see whether Koenig and Lane are still applying pressure. What do you want? I can breathe. Please, the name of it. I can breathe, see it. Bro, get him, get in the car, man. I will. Get up, get in the car. I can't move. I've been waiting the whole time, ah. man. Just get up, get in the car. Mama. Get up and get Mama. in the car right. I can't. In the two videos, Floyd can be heard telling officers that he can't breathe at least 16 times in less than five minutes. Yeah, I cannot breathe. In the I cannot breathe. But Chauvin never takes his knee off of Floyd, even as his eyes close and he appears to go unconscious. Look at him. Bro. Get off of him now! What is wrong with y'all? What the f***? He got made. He got made. According to medical and policing experts, these four police officers are committing a series of actions that violate policies and in this case turn fatal. They've kept Floyd lying face down, applying pressure for at least five minutes. This combined action is likely compressing his chest and making it impossible to breathe. Chauvin is pushing his knee into Floyd's neck, a move banned by most police departments. Bro, he's not f-ing moving. No, did they f-ing kill him, bro? Minneapolis Police Department policy states an officer can only do this if someone is, quote, actively resisting. And even though the officers call for medical assistance, they take no action to treat Floyd on their own while waiting for the ambulance to arrive. You, 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 call, you think that's pulse. okay? Check his okay. pulse. Check his right Stop. Check now. his pulse. Get back in the Check. Side. The man ain't moved yet, bro. According to the complaints against the officers, Lane asks him twice if they should roll Floyd onto his side. Chauvin says no. 20 minutes into the arrest, an ambulance arrives on the scene. Get off of his neck! The EMTs check Floyd's pulse. Are you serious? Chauvin keeps his knee on Floyd's neck for almost another whole minute, even though Floyd appears completely unresponsive. He only gets off once the EMTs tell him to. Chauvin's kept his knee on Floyd's neck for a total of 8 minutes and 46 seconds, according to the complaint filed against him. Floyd is loaded into the ambulance. The ambulance leaves the scene, possibly because a crowd is forming, but the EMTs call for additional medical help from the fire department. You added fire to your run. But when the engine arrives, the officers give them, quote, no clear info on Floyd or his whereabouts, according to a fire department incident report. This delays their ability to help the paramedics. Meanwhile, Floyd is going into cardiac arrest. 320, um, if you could let MFD know that EMS needs to, fire needs to go to parking 36, your patient is a full left now. It takes the engine five minutes to reach Floyd and the ambulance. He's pronounced dead at a nearby hospital around 9.25 p.m. Preliminary autopsies conducted by the state and Floyd's family both ruled his death a homicide. The widely circulated arrest videos don't paint the entire picture of what happened to George Floyd. Additional video and audio from the body cameras of the key officers would reveal more about why the struggle began and how it escalated. The city quickly fired all four officers, and Chauvin has been charged with second-degree murder. Thomas Lane, J. Alexander Koenig, and Tu Tao were charged with aiding and abetting murder. But outrage over George Floyd's death has only spread further and further across the United States. <laughs> 